So previously to our algebraic surface X, we have associated two groups, the groups of veil divisors up to linear equivalent and the Cartier divisors up to linear equivalent. Remember, two divisors, whether veil or Cartier, are linearly equivalent if they differ by a principal divisor, i.e. the divisor of a rational function. So this gives us two maps from the set of algebraic surfaces to the set of groups. Well, there's nothing special about dimension 2. This also works for high dimension. But we'll stick to the discussion of surfaces for now. Now, map maps are a bit low-key. We want to use more high-tech tools. So we want to turn this into functors between categories. Right, and what does that involve? Well, we need to define the functors on objects. We did that. That's good. Now we need to define the functors on morphisms. If we have a morphism between algebraic surfaces, how would that induce a um, group homomorphisms on the divisor groups? Let's look at Cartier divisor first. So a Cartier divisor on Y is going to be given by an equivalence class of family of functions. It's locally principled, so it's locally divisors of functions. And functions are really nice. That This is the advantage of Cartier divisors. Functions are really nice because we know how to pull back function. So we can define a map in the other direction, sending this Cartier divisor to this pullback Cartier divisor, in which all of these functions here are just pullback of this G alpha. They are going to be rational functions on the covering given by um, the preimage of the covering U alpha. So thus, the Cartier divisor group gives a contravariant functor. We can pull back Cartier divisors. Then the question is, can we do the same for veil divisors? Can we just send this divisor to its pullback? I.e., I just take the preimages of these ci. Does this work? Well, not quite. The problem is that these preimages these might not be co-dimension 1 irreducible subvarieties anymore. So this formal sum might no longer be a divisor. So we'll have to cross out that plan, and we cannot pull back veil divisor. But we don't have to give up. If we cannot do pullback, we'll do push forward. So given a veil divisor, we can define its push forward in the following way. So for each of these curves, ci, we can define the push forward of ci. So if the image of CI is smaller dimension, means this collapse, then this is no longer a divisor, not a prime divisor, so we will just say this push forward is zero. Now otherwise, that means the image stays the same dimension as the dimension of C, so the map phi restricts to a, a finite map. Then in that case, we define this push forward of CI to be the image of CI, but then we multiply it with the degree of the map phi to account for the points in the fiber. If phi is of degree 2, for example, then in a generic fiber, two points of CI is going to map to just one point. So we can view this as CI goes into phi CI twice. That's why we want to put the degree phi here to account for that. So we can push forward veil divisors, and thus the veil divisor group, we can view it as a covariant functor. Finally, observe the following relationship between the push forward and the pullback. So if the map phi is finite of degree n, then the push forward of the pullback of any Cartier divisor is just going to be n times that divisor. Intuitively, we can see that locally as follows. So say these are Cartier divisors so locally, it's cut out by some functions, and let's say these are the zero, local zero of that function. Then it's pulled back locally, it's just the preimage of that function of this under the map phi. The push forward send this again back into here. But remember, to account for the fiber, the size of fiber, we need to multiply it with the degree. So then the push forward is again d, but then multiply with the degree of phi. This is true in particular for the canonical divisor on y. Now, if additionally we ask that this map be a dull, i.e. it's going to be an isomorphism on tangent spaces, then canonical divisor must pull back to canonical divisor, so this should be kx. 
Why is that? Well, because the canonical devices just comes from the cotangent bundle. And again, we said for an ethylmorphism, by definition, the tangent spaces have to be isomorphic. So the pullback of the canonical class Ky must be the canonical class Kx. Thus, we have the following identity for ethylmorph that the push forward of the canonical class of x is just degree of phi multiplied with the canonical class of y.